Welcome to the high level panel discussion and launch of the COVID-19 stimulus tracker, global observatory on social protection and economic policy responses. We are happy and honored to see you all, albeit virtually, in this side event to the high level political forum on sustainable development 2021. Allow me first to make few housekeeping notes before we start the event. You are kindly invited to switch your microphone to mute mode. You may unmute if you are given the floor. Simultaneous translation is available in Arabic, English, French, and Spanish. You can follow the meeting in the language of your choice by clicking on the globe interpretation feature, which is usually at the bottom of the screen. To raise questions, you may kindly type them in the chat box. To begin the event, I would like to invite Dr. Rola Dashti, Under Secretary General and the Executive Secretary of UN ESQUA to deliver the opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mona. Excellencies, representatives of member states, distinguished panelists and colleagues. Good morning, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this important event. As you are all well aware, COVID-19 has impacted the lives and livelihoods of millions of people across the globe, adversely affecting the global economy and reversing significant progress made towards the sustainable development goals. Demand for social protection virtually exploded globally and governments worldwide have extended some form of social and economic support to lives and livelihoods to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. As of May 2021, the number of social protection responses by all governments worldwide had reached 1,850 policy responses as compared with 103 policy responses in March 2020. At the HLPF, through various events, we are discussing how the UN can support member states in their national efforts. In this context, to inform decision makers about concrete policy actions, strengthen their policy making capacity, and improve government readiness to formulate effective responses to future shocks. ESQUA has led a global initiative in collaboration with ECA and produced the COVID-19 stimulus tracker. The tracker is a UN contribution to the global community. It is the first global tool of its kind that compiles all social protection and economic policy support measures of all the governments of the United Nations member states and presents them in a state-of-the-art dynamic visualization platform. Distinguished guests, the tracker with its wealth of information has unique features that can inform policy actions and socioeconomic recovery plans for building forward better. It facilitates peer learning about social protection and economic policy actions through user-friendly navigation. It enables comparison of national policy actions vis-a-vis -vis global, regional, and income group levels. It estimates financial needs of countries and regions for impact mitigation by taking into consideration global regional average benchmarks. The tracker is a living database updated periodically. Distinguished guests, the tracker, the tracker has some, can someone mute please? The, the tracker has some important findings for the, for the global community that I would like to share with you. First, global fiscal stimulus oui has reached nearly $19 trillion. The 132 low and middle income countries account for only 10% of a global stimulus, which is around $1.9 trillion. While the 62 high income countries account for 90% of the total global fiscal, which is about $17 billion. The wide disparity in fiscal responses to the pandemic and also the current challenges of inequality in access to vaccine across countries pose high risks for equity in global recovery and tend to increase global inequality 
in the post-COVID period. Estimates from the tracker also show that low and middle income countries need an additional $5 trillion to recover from COVID-19 and catch up to the global average of fiscal support as a percentage of GDP. The Arab region alone needs $462 billion. Having said that, we need to enhance official development assistance and mobilize finance, including through significant redistribution of SDRs on the basis of need and not on the basis of existing quota. The existing quota of SDRs for low and middle income countries can assist with only $202 billion out of the proposed new allocation of $650 billion by the IMF. The pace of recovery is expected to be low in regions that have high fiscal constraints, such as Africa and the Arab region. Furthermore, these countries have extended a larger number of social assistance interventions in the form of foregone income, such as utility waivers, rental waivers, tax exemptions, which reduces revenue flows and tightens fiscal space further for meeting essential expenditure needs on health and social protection. And finally, the tracker shows that countries need to revisit their social protection strategies and programs and adopt innovative measures to support people and their livelihood during the pandemic. Decision makers can learn from the innovative initiatives featured in the tracker to improve their capacity in formulating and implementing policy actions. Distinguished guests, these policy findings are critical towards ensuring a speedy and equitable recovery of low and middle income countries and improving their readiness to mitigate future shocks. I'm looking forward to listening from the distinguished panelists and I wish them success for a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dashti, for the insightful remarks. And now I would like to invite Ms. Tokozil Ruzvidzo, the Director of Gender, Poverty and Social Policy Division at UNECA to deliver ECA's opening remarks. Ms. Toko. Uh, thank you very much, Mona. Excellency Ministers, the Executive Secretary of UNESCO, Dr. Dasht, distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. I bring you greetings from Dr. Vera Songwe, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, who would have loved to be here, but unfortunately, due to prior commitments, could not join us. As we all know, COVID is having a threefold impact, whereby a severe health shock has led, led to domestic containment measures with serious economic and social impact. These local economic and social impacts combined with a resultant uh, slowdown in the global economy are having significant social consequences that are in turn becoming increasingly, increasingly likely to be felt for years and generations to come. Such impacts across all regions, Africa, Asia, the Pacific, Europe, Latin America, and Caribbean, as well as Western Asia, the, all these continents are feeling the impact. This was the background to which the UN requested a quick response to COVID by all the regional commissions and UNCTAD. Against this backdrop, the regional commissions des designed the project on strengthening social protection protection for pandemic response to support member states across the five regional commissions. That is the Economic Commission for Africa, the Economic Commission for Europe, the Economic Commission for Latin America, the Economic and Social Commission for Asia Pacific, and the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for West Africa, who we are co-hosting with today, to strengthen national capacities to design and implement social protection policies with a gender perspective for sustained recovery from COVID-19 impact and increasing resilience, especially of the most vulnerable populations against future exogenous shocks. In this regard, three work streams were designed that constituted the proposals and the, uh, I mean the project and the, West, the work streams are one, enhanced capacity for social protection, 
by improved institutional capacity among government stakeholders to implement and deliver social protection. The second work stream, strengthened care economy policies for recovery by developing innovative capacities and cooperation mechanisms to integrate, for example, the care economy into social protection and other public policies um, in response uh, to COVID. Then the third uh, stream, improved poverty measurement and identification by improved national capacity for production of timely and disaggregated poverty measures and vulner vulnerability identification following inter internationally agreed guidance and thus to help inform the implementation and design of social protection processes. So you can see from the three streams, one was looking at social protection, one was looking at care economy, where the majority of women are, and the third, to look at improved measurement. The phase one and phase two, which is mostly about knowledge, a production of knowledge products, were developed by all the regional economic uh, commissions and INCTAD, and are vital for the social protection especially with the impact of COVID, as I've already said. The first stream on social protection is, of course, led by ESQA. And uh, it is a joy that today we are sharing with you um, the global tracker that was led by ESQA. Our appreciation to ESQA for that leadership. The knowledge products that we are producing under this project range from e-health, to estimating risk and vulnerability of country specific studies. The global trigger that we are gathered to, to look at today and will be presented by ESQA is one of these knowledge products and covers 192 countries. And already the executive sector of ESQA has spoken to it. The tracker presents both the fiscal and monetary response that members have implemented and also gives us an opportunity to be able to review uh, these responses. For example, the radar chart is quite interesting and shows how containment measure level of stringency, loss in GDP and fiscal support show the overall economic cost of tracking the disease through the initial lockdowns and how COVID is a combined economic and health cost and to us in Africa in particular. The country specific downloadable files are a useful instrument in monitoring what has been done at national level and evaluating efficacy and efficiency. The sustainability of the global uh, tracker is something I would like to leave you with, given its specificity, but its importance as well in assessing national responses to COVID and how could this be developed further into a monitoring and a monitoring instrument for shocks in general is key. And I hope when we start discussing the tracker, some of these issues can be looked at. Distinguished participants, let me conclude by pledging ECA support to African member states in the use of the global tracker. We'll be introducing it to all the 54 member states. And I'm glad that the Honorable Minister, Paul Mavima, the Minister of Public Service, Labor and Social Welfare of Zimbabwe is here with us. We'll be accompanying them on this journey of implementing and making use of the global tracker. I wish you successful deliberations. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Zvito. Thank you very much. In the interest of time, I will hand over the floor now to our distinguished moderator, Dr. Rami Ahmed. Dr. Ahmed is the Special Envoy on SDGs and the Senior Advisor to the President at the Islamic Development Banking Group. The floor is yours, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you, Mona. Thank you very much. And thanks to uh, all the preparation efforts that are going into this uh, uh, launching event. And uh, good morning, good evening to all the participants who joined us uh, today. Uh, I cannot say uh, I have to thank uh, Dr. Deshti and uh, Ms. Uh, Tokozade for their opening remarks because they made my job much easier by setting the stage like this with all the information. Uh, Dr. Dusty for talking about the uh, policy actions for raising the issues about equitable distribution. Uh, it's, it's very profound to know that only 10% of the total global stimulus is going to the 
uh, developing countries to over 100, 132 countries with only 10% of the global uh, total stimulus. Uh, thank you for the point on the IMF distribution. This is something that we all need to be talking about, especially with the distribution of 650 billion. And we need, need to talk about equitable distribution for member countries. So thank you very much, uh, Ms. Deshti, and to you and to the ESQUA team and to all the wonderful work that your wonderful team is, is doing. Again, also thank you to Ms. Uh, uh, Rosa Vitru. Uh, I, I am exposed now more to the work of ECA. Thank you very much. And we appreciate all the efforts that ECA is really doing, especially with these knowledge products and the e-health uh, portals that you mentioned. <coughs> Excuse me. Now. Uh, after hearing all these insightful uh, uh, opening remarks from both ladies, uh, we are looking forward really to having a very informative session uh, where the COVID-19 stimulus tracker will be launched uh, and a presentation on the key findings will also will be uh, uh, highlighted briefly. And this will be followed by uh, distinguished uh, panelists who will help us understand some of the experiences of three countries, namely Sudan, Zimbabwe, and Jordan. Uh, with us will be His Excellency Ahmed Bakhid, the Minister of Social uh, Development in Sudan, the Honorable uh, Paul Mavima from uh, Zimbabwe, also Minister of uh, Public uh, Services, Labor, and Social Welfare. And we have uh, also His Excellency Mr. Omar Mashakba, the DG of the National Aid Fund, for reasons beyond uh, his control, uh, His Excellency Mr. Faisal Khalayla will replace him. Uh, we will listen to their thoughts. Uh, we will have the opportunity also to ask them questions and follow up with them. And we'll finally have closing remarks from both ESQUA and uh, ECA uh, to, to finalize the next uh, maybe hour or so. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, this is really, uh, the agenda. This was the agenda. So let me say a few words, although the distinguished two ladies before me just set the stage and I'm going to uh, abbreviate what I had uh, prepared for this as a stage uh, setting. But we are, uh, we need to understand why this tool is really important. As we all are struggling, really trying to get out of the adverse situations that we are in because of the pandemic at the individual level, at the organizational level, at the national level and uh, actually at the global level at all, uh, our focus today is really on the national level. And many governments, central banks also rushed to respond with all kinds of policy measures and allocating hefty, hefty stimulus packages depending on their capabilities. In some developed countries, uh, governments allocated the trillions of dollars. You know that the United States government, for example, allocated 4.5 trillion or so, representing about 23% of their GDP of for 2020. Not to mention countries like uh, Japan and Italy, they surpassed the 50% percentage of their GDP. Unfortunately, however, many developing countries lag behind in terms of the amount allocated and the number of policy measures that they were able to take and implement successfully to deal with the ramifications of this pandemic. This was one aspect. The other aspect is really very important. Also the difficulties that these developing countries are facing in identifying and estimating the fiscal needs required to mitigate for the adverse effects of the pandemic. And not to mention, as Dr. Deshti mentioned in the beginning, the reversal of the uh, gains in implementing the 2030 agenda and the SDGs. Uh, more than 100 million people were pushed back into extreme poverty. According to the ILO, more than 255 million jobs were lost. So all these things need to be in mind as we are talking about estimating the fiscal needs for, uh, for coming back or building back better or building forward better as it was uh, nicely put uh, by the Secretary General. So this, uh, these genuine efforts uh, really in creating this observatory with the life tracker will be helpful in dealing with these two challenges that we just mentioned. It's important to sense the best practices and how governments succeeded 
or failed really in identifying the fiscal needs and allocating the appropriate stimulus package. It's important to understand the global context, but it is even more important to understand the regional context. And this is what this tool will help us really get to. Uh, as you know, it's very difficult. Some regions cannot and will not be able to, uh, they don't have the capacity to implement or mimic what uh, the ready prescriptions that sometimes come from the North. We need to also understand what the South is doing and how can we improve the South-South cooperation. So the tool will be useful tool in addressing these issues. And we will be seeing the salient features of this, uh, of this user-friendly uh, living database, which is really utilizing state-of-the-art dynamic visualization facilities. And uh, the best way I think to be introduced to this tool and to launch this uh, tool is really to watch a, a video. And I think this is a, an appropriate time to break the ice with this video. Ms. Mona, if we can have this video before we uh, get on with the session. Go ahead, please. The COVID-19 Stimulus Tracker is an innovative and pioneering observatory of government responses to the pandemic in the areas of social protection and economic policy. The tracker covers all United Nations member states. It facilitates comparisons across countries and regions and helps in assessing the equity and adequacy of stimulus measures. The tracker strengthens peer learning and policy making and improves government readiness to formulate effective responses to future shocks, including social protection for informal sector workers and the most vulnerable populations. The Global Stimulus page provides an aggregate of policy responses in seven thematic areas. Social assistance, social insurance, loans and tax benefits, the labour market, health-related support, financial policy support, and general policy support. The Financial Needs page provides estimates of additional financial needs for countries and regions to mitigate the adverse impact of the pandemic. A user may choose a thematic area, social assistance, for example, which features global social assistance measures in terms of GDP, beneficiaries of social assistance, the number of countries implementing social assistance measures, and the number of countries implementing gender and care services as part of social assistance. The user may select a region to explore the same data at the regional level. The user may also select a specific country to know more about social assistance measures and beneficiaries in that particular country. The same type of information is presented in other thematic areas. The tracker is a living database, updated periodically. It is a UN contribution to the global community, which demonstrates the ability of the United Nations to deliver global public goods. Okay, thank you very much. Give you back to the normal setting. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, excellent, excellent video. Very informative. Uh, all the efforts are appreciated in the preparing this uh, video. Thank you, Escoa, for taking the lead. Not only in the video, but uh, I, I tried this tool uh, interactively. It's really, really very impressive. So thank you very much for all the all involved, and thank you, Escoa, for the for leading this effort, showing the contribution of the UN to the global community in dealing with this pandemic. Uh, this was the tool, this was the tool. How about the context now? How about the beef? How about what's inside this tool? And for this, we will turn to uh, Mr. Niranjan uh, Saranji, uh, the Senior Economic Affairs uh, Officer at ESCOA to introduce us to the tracker and to present to us the key findings uh, as an icebreaker before we get to our distinguished panelists and opening the discussion. Uh, Mr. Niranjan, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Rami. Excellencies uh, and uh, distinguished colleagues uh, and experts. It's a pleasure and I think uh, the first session already 
uh, elaborated uh, the. Uh, you can expand the, the the screen, please. That will make it much better. Uh, the presentation show. Yeah, I think. Uh, yes. It, now you are in. Yes. That's yes. great. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. M. So uh, I think uh, the fast person has already elaborated uh, the impact of COVID-19 on lives and livelihoods, the kind of responses and inequality in fiscal policy responses across countries and income groups uh, 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 that the world had seen and how it is going to impact even uh, the global uh, recovery in the post-COVID period. So I will not... Uh, delve much into these issues, rather I'll focus on the findings of the tracker uh, uh, and, and how it can be beneficial for peer learning and transfer of knowledge across countries, uh, across decision makers. So that's what will be the objective. Uh, to be precise, uh, we will focus on uh, uh, how governments have responded other than the first introductory uh, 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 slide of uh, how COVID-19 has impacted lives and livelihoods. Then looking at mainly patterns emerging from fiscal support, monetary value, looking at how are the policy measures across regions and countries because uh, it, 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 the, the, the impact varies as well as the response varies across countries depending on their capacities as uh, Dr. Rami mentioned in, the previous, in, in his previous remarks. And uh, the novelty of the tracker is also to see how it is impacting the beneficiaries, who are the who have been benefited and who are left out uh, in the context of uh, leaving no one behind if we are talking about progressing to the SDGs. And then we look at what this social protection uh, system, uh, uh, what is new in the COVID-19 social protection system, because the social protection systems have been exploded across all countries in the world. So in that context, we will see what is new there and then building forward better, I'll conclude with one slide there. And uh, this, uh, this, is, this is what uh, I think Dr. Dusty also mentioned that uh, across the world, uh, uh, the world had seen an unprecedented shrink in global output, perhaps since the uh, depression in 1930s. Uh, the global output has shrunk, debt has risen to historic levels, fiscal deficit have surged uh, more than double digit globally and uh, loss of jobs, incomes, increase in migrants, refugees, and you talk about it. So the impact varies across regions and countries, but also the responses vary across countries, countries and regions, depending on their readiness, depending on the capacities, depending on financial strength, and uh, 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 depending on how uh, the governments have been quick enough to, to respond in, in terms of the speed, in terms of delivery mechanisms. So, uh, we try to map these policy responses, both social protection and economic, because in, in, in the context of COVID-19, actually some policies have also broken barriers between what traditionally called social protection and, and economic policy response. Uh, uh, and we try to see how governments have uh, responded to this uh, situation. We, uh, club the policy measures across seven categories, social assistance, loans and tax benefit as the video rightly shown about the tracker, social insurance and labor market, these four categories mainly in the, in, in the area of social protection and here loan and tax benefit refers to loan and tax benefits to individuals. Uh, this is one of the innovations also in the social protection policy responses in, in the context of COVID-19 that the world had seen how uh, social protection can be also to, to extend it to the new vulnerables or the middle class or the people who have taken loans, they may not be necessarily extremely poor, but, uh, but they needed the support at the time of the need. Uh, in addition to that, the, the health related support, financial policy support and global policy and, and general policy support are additional features that we have added. Uh, this map shows that most of the countries around the world have done more than 10 measures. If you look at the FAQ, the question and answer in the tracker, it, it presents to you the definition of uh, or the explanation of each uh, uh, policy category and what are the policy measures exactly in each category of, of, uh, of policy support. Um, total something like 44 measures. And if you look at... Uh, uh, the social protection categories, which is social assistance, loan and tax benefit to individuals, social insurance and labor market, they are like 22 measures. 
uh, and and uh, uh, the tracker link is also given in the uh, uh, screen. Uh, anybody can browse, and the tracker is uh, it's supposed to be now operational, and you you can browse uh, through your computer. And uh, yes, this is the first to see how governments have responded in terms of money. Of course, the capacities uh, uh, lead to uh, the, the difference in uh, fiscal support, direct fiscal support uh, uh, responses. Low income countries, uh, about 2% of the GDP as opposed to high income countries with 32% of GDP. And, and rightly, USA, Japan, Italy are on, on top. Of course, Japan and Italy are more generous if you can talk about quote unquote, uh, extending more than 50% of their GDP as, as fiscal support, cash, cash in, in terms of uh, spending from the treasury. But also low income countries, although the figure shows low in terms of cash, they have a lot of uh, uh, support measures which are not necessarily cash, but foregone incomes, foregone revenues in terms of utility waivers, in terms of rent uh, and, and subsidies. Uh, so, so sometimes we, we may need to look at the figure with a, with a little bit of caution, but overall, this is the inequality in fiscal response that uh, uh, one, uh, one can see. So obviously when uh, uh, COVID uh, strike in uh, everyone and every sphere of activity, uh, uh, then governments have responded to it either through cash or through non-cash. And those who are at, at, at constraint of fiscal space, they have more sort of responded by uh, Im implementing containment measures. Containment measures is, uh, I, I, we, we are connecting this tracker to the Oxford, uh, um, Oxford COVID-19 uh, uh, policy responses, uh, where uh, they have taken into account nine metrics relating to closure of workplace, closure of schools, closure of transport, closure of supply chains. So if you look at those nine measures, it comes, it gives a stringency index and that basically we, we took at least a country if has imposed more than six out of, uh, six out of nine uh, containment measures, then it's a high level of stringency measures, we call it. And you can see that East Asia, Pacific, Europe, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the countries like uh, uh, South Asia, Latin America, Caribbean, Arab region, uh, Africa without North Africa. Uh, I mean, those regions who, who have extended less fiscal support have uh, adopted more containment, uh, containment measures. And that has implications on jobs and incomes as well, uh, particularly in the informal sector that we'll be talking about a little later. On uh, to you and Erjan, but uh, we, for in the interest of time, maybe three more minutes to wrap up with the presentation so we can listen to the distinguished uh, panelists. If you can uh, expedite that, would be great, please. Sure. How many more minutes should I uh, do? I have. How about the three? Because you are from Esqua, we'll give you three minutes. How about that? Uh, three minutes. Okay, I'll try to uh, uh, grab you it. Used, in, uh, you used you used eight minutes so so far. So three more minutes maybe is is appropriate to just highlight the more important things, please. Okay. Yeah, much of the information is in the tracker, and and uh, readers can uh, users can go through it and uh, navigate. Uh, we also have a policy brief that basically summarizes the findings. The policy brief is also embedded in the about the tracker page, so one can browse it. Here it shows in terms of fiscal policy, uh, fiscal support uh, total about uh, globally, about 9% of the fiscal support is spent on social protection, 58% or nearly 60% is spent on economic policy support, but there are quite a lot, about a quarter of it is not disaggregated, which means that we do not exactly disaggregate uh, because when the governments have announced policy measures, they have combined, okay, some is going as cash transfer, some is also going as support to the business. So if they're combined, it's not easy to disaggregate. Uh, uh, so we are presenting the information as it is announced by the governments and that says that a quarter of information is not disaggregated, which means it's a challenge, which, which means more readiness is required to allocate uh, uh, the, the fiscal support in a way that you can see who is the target population, who is the target beneficiary. As Dr. Dusty mentioned, it's about 1,850 1, 800, social protection measures across uh, uh, the world. And much of it actually uh, is in social assistance. Uh, about 52% of it is in social assistance. You can see the right side histogram globally, about 52% of social assistance. 
um, and these measures are high while the amount is less in, in, in uh, that means that many of the measures are also in the form of non cash as i said utility waivers or rental uh, subsidy this kind of measures quickly going over if i have another two minutes left uh, uh, fiscal support uh, is also if you look at the distribution of beneficiaries who benefits uh, out of it about 10 percent goes to people and 25 percent goes to uh, businesses uh, and 65 percent again is not disaggregated here and uh, globally about uh, uh, 53 percent or 54 percent uh, goes uh, to employees and self-employed self among the people who are benefited more uh, is uh, or the information available with us uh, is it, it's employees and self-employed both the formal and informal sector and uh, the there are also certain regions which are focused more on specific vulnerable groups including elderly including people with disability uh, uh, and that's reflected in also the right side uh, graph which shows that uh, countries with uh, a number of measures that is supporting the employees and self-employed individuals and families, specific vulnerable population. Many countries have adopted measures to support these kind of beneficiaries. The, the radar chart, I think our colleague mentioned previously, it, it gives contrasting patterns how, I mean, we put together data from ILO, from IMF, from Oxford Tracker and the global, global uh, uh, tracker uh, which which gives fiscal uh, support you see that uh, the 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 v which is the loss in gdp and the mountain peak which is the loss in working hours is much higher in arab region or in africa as compared to the global average of course the tracker there are several things happening i mean uh, with the exploding social protection uh, there are also innovations uh, that I will not spend much time, rather one can perhaps look at the uh, policy brief. There is expansion of, uh, of, uh, of, of social protection programs, both in, in new schemes as well as uh, the scaling up programs, digital innovations in delivery. Uh, there are gender sensitive measures taken, care services measures, new financing mechanisms uh, introduced. So there are certain innovations. The crisis also brings opportunities, as we say. So in that context, uh, there are examples presented in the uh, policy brief. Uh, and, and also, the tracker provides more details about what are the innovations in policy measures, whether in the social assistance category. As I said, in loans and tax benefit category, there are several innovations and several new policy measures introduced to assist people, uh, uh, particularly the new vulnerables. Um, social insurance and labor market schemes, you can see uh, paid leave or labor regulation adjustments. These are unprecedented uh, measures that are introduced by several countries. And the details, one can also download uh, the data from the tracker and look at it, what exactly the policy measure. In summary, most governments extended social protection measures, majority of them through social assistance. Low and middle income countries have extended large number of uh, me uh, measures through foregun revenues, so that further constrains their fiscal space as well. Uh, second, most governments also resorted to measure to wage subsidies, which is a uh, which is which is important uh, to to retain employment, but that's mainly in the high income countries. Uh, social insurance and labor market support are generally low in low and middle income countries, and uh, the support has come mainly through regulatory measures. It sometimes also has negative consequences on. On, on, on jobs, particularly in the informal sector. Uh, the targeting mechanism is not often very clear, and that's where also require the social protection needs more strengthening in terms of uh, how, what should the targeting, what should be the identification mechanism, what should be the delivery mechanism. So that also le leads to uh, uh, assessing coverage and adequacy of social protection programs. And uh, this uh, proves that some countries do need to revisit their social protection strategies and, strategies and programs toward making it more inclusive so that uh, we do not leave anyone behind. And, and as Dr. Dusty said, this is my last slide, saying that improving equity in global recovery is essential. And uh, the current system, uh, the current way of fiscal support is definitely not pointing to that. So there is a call for uh, supporting countries in formulating enhanced inclusive social protection systems, and the tracker provides information for peer learning 
across countries, across decision makers, how they can use the information for, for the benefit of designing as well as implementing policies. Financing is key and, and, and uh, definitely there is a need for enhancing ODA, need for mobilizing finance, including to redistributing SDRs. I think Dr. Dusty has mentioned, uh, you, uh, Dr. Rami has also alluded to it. Alluded to it. I can answer on, on these questions, perhaps in the discussions. Finally, I would say that the tracker is a big teamwork. It's a team led by ESCO, of course, but with colleagues from ECA. We, we have here several colleagues attending. Uh, from social protection team, from uh, economics team, uh, uh, and also from the IT team. The conceptualization of the visualization in addition to the uh, implementation of the visualization by the IT team, I, I also applaud their effort and uh, a contribution to it. So it's a year long effort. We hope that the tracker is useful to the users. And we are, uh, we, this is a living document, a living database. We are still updating certain functionalities any comment, any uh, 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 suggestions are always welcome so that we can keep improving the tracker for the benefit of the decision makers, for the benefit of the users. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for this comprehensive presentation. This is really very good. Uh, thanks to all the teams involved. Uh, I'm sure a lot of work has been put into this tracker. And you gave us the key, key, key findings as a snapshot. So I'm sure there will be questions maybe later on when we get to the question time. How often you update this thing? How live is it? When we say a live database, uh, is it live as of last month? Is it live of as last quarter or something like this? But definitely it's, it's, a, it's a great tracker. And thank you very much for really breaking the ice and giving us a feel and, of, of, and a sense of the key findings uh, of, of the tracker so far. We need to emphasize so far because it's a living document and it's a living tracker and we don't know what will happen. And maybe it's an idea for ESCO and the others to put repeatedly, maybe on a quarterly basis, uh, launch some sort of, uh, of, of uh, report to show the, the progress from quarter to quarter or something like that. Yes. Uh, I thank you very much again. Uh, and uh, now we need to move to the uh, distinguished panelists and I apologize for keeping you waiting. Thank you for your patience. But now we will listen to experiences from three different countries and hopefully uh, we'll have some time for some questions toward the end. Uh, but I would like to start with His Excellency, Mr. Ahmed uh, Adam Bakhid, the Minister of Social Development in Sudan. Sudan is a very is a special country these days going through transformation and it would be interesting to really listen to uh, their experiences and how they look at these issues and how they could benefit from such a tool. Uh, Mr. Minister, Ma'ali Wazir, if you are with us and you are listening to us, God bless you, Sayyid. بشتي وكيلة الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة والأمين التنفيذي للأسكوى ومعالي السيدات والسادة الوزراء من كل المنطقة العربية والأفريقية الحضور الكريم لكم التحية والتقدير يشرفني وتعدين أن أكون معكم اليوم في هذا في هذا الحدث الهام المخصص لإطلاق أداة تتبع الحزم التنفيذية التحفيزية المنفذة 